What's crackalackin'? It's your boy Baroshmo, just in case you did not know so. Back again, once again, for another video. This time, it's the finale. We're gonna go over the Kansas City Chiefs. Will it be another Super Bowl? I mean, bring back a very similar team with a few additions, a few subtractions. Not too much has changed, but we'll get into all that. We'll go over the roster, we'll go over the schedule. I'll give you my projected starters as well as a prediction but go ahead become a bro and subscribe leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content i got my madden videos on the channel so go ahead check those out if you will i don't know what's up with youtube seems like videos uh, normally this is a cold like cold season for nfl content but i don't know it seems like my videos just aren't doing that hot so if you like them share them it's always much appreciated, much obliged. Regardless, the support is always, always appreciated. Thank you. And so this being the finale means tomorrow we'll be doing the playoff predictions. And then after that, I'll be using these stand-ins to do an NFL mock draft. How many times can I do this? Am I right? Like I'm karate chopping. Uh, NCAA, I'm still learning about that. I got. I had to get uh, <laughs> the wrong power core for the 360. So um, that'll be here Monday. So yeah, we'll see if I can get all that stuff up and running. Quick note with the Madden stuff. I, I answered some of that in the comments, but season two will actually um, play through a few games, at least the big moments and such. So we're gonna be, the format for each episode will probably be Sim 3 and then go in and um, play the big moments for one game kind of what the franchise guy uh the franchise guy does and you know he's pretty darn good i actually love his content so i'm gonna take his idea nah it's a good format so i'm just gonna use it so let's go ahead let's dive into this sucker we're talking about the kansas city chiefs and let's just start with the roster i don't think there's much to say patrick mahomes He's phenomenal. He is very good at uh, the deep ball, which, uh, yeah, this team is vertically is very successful. Uh, and he's got great weapons to do that in Tyreek Hill, uh, McKeel, McKeel, Mikul Harmon. There we go. Um, while well, used sparingly, he was mainly used as that vertical threat. Sammy Watkins, you know, when he wants to show up, he shows up. Uh, De Demarcus Robinson returns for another season here. And. He, he was he was pretty good when they when they had injuries early and then his production kind of dipped off Brian Pringle even got involved a little bit down the field uh, I mean that's a, I think that's a great five and then looking at their other addition or some of their additions from uh, undrafted free agents the only name that probably pops up is Kalijah Lipscomb from Vandy He's he's not like he's a vertical threat by any means. Not a lot of speed. Uh, he's really just kind of a possession receiver. He's a very good route runner. So maybe a chain mover. That's probably the only guy that really caught ca or at least catches my eye from that. that if I were going to include a sixth in here, and then we already know Travis Kelsey. Probably he's up there with best tight end in the league with George Kittle. Yeah, George Kittle. <laughs> I always I always say I think Greg or something else. I don't know why. But yeah, he's phenomenal. Not much behind him though. Uh maybe you can make a case for Ricky Seals Jones, but the guy's kind of just a journeyman already in his very young career. Plenty of weapons in the backfield as far as the running backs. They they actually got a solid, solid few. Not all these guys are gonna make the roster. I mean, add in Clyde Edwards Hilaire in the first round. While I don't love the value of the pick, can't deny this guy is kind of ideal for this offense. Very good pass catcher, very compact as a runner, very good vision. Not necessarily the best speed, but he accelerates real quick. So I'm very excited for him. Damian Williams will be back back with this squad, no doubt. Might might even be probably the starter. So uh, he, he was pretty good. The only like if I were to include probably I think they're gonna hold on to two more guys outside of Damian Williams and Clyde Edwards Hilaire I would have to say DeAndre Washington because he just kind of fits the mold 
of what this team wants in their running backs. And then Darwin Thompson, who was actually pretty darn good. And actually, low key, their best run blocker. Or uh, was it run blocker? Yeah, run blocker and pass blocker. So kind of weird. Kind of weird. So he has a bit of a utility there. But again, another guy ideal for this offense. So, I mean, uh, Darren Williams, he came in parts. But I honestly, they could probably do without them they're just fine elijah mcguire 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 again he's just kind of a maybe a practice squad guy if that guy's already kind of bounced around what he i think he came from the jets or the raiders san fran okay he's bit bounced around a few teams already so yeah these guys are really good they had nine fumbles combined last year this is including shady so yeah, and you could talk about Anthony Sherman, who actually has quite a good role in this offense as well. Here's the real question. The offensive line, how well will they play? Well, I think particularly well. Eric Fisher has actually been pretty solid. Uh, he missed time, I believe, early, but he was pretty darn good. Only allowed 25 pressures there. Um, then you got your center, Austin Reeder who was actually really good in his own right. He was probably their um, second best off for a second. Yes, yeah, he was about on par with Eric Fisher uh, outside Mitchell Schwartz, who's just a monster, probably the best right tackle. Of, well, okay, Ryan Ramchak or uh, Ramchak, maybe, but this guy's right up there. Uh, but yeah, Austin Raider, um, Reader, I'm probably butchering the last name, my apologies. But he was pretty darn good, especially as a pass blocker. He only allowed 11 pressures through 19 games. So good on you, my friend. Good on you. And then this is the guard spot is tricky because Laurent Duvernay Tardif, we're going to go with LDT. He's probably, well, last season he was probably their worst offensive lineman. Uh, he wasn't that good as a run blocker. He allowed 27 pressures, five penalties. Three sacks, 22 hurries, so 27 of those pressures turned into hurries, which not great, but I mean, he's average, so you, you can't hate too much, but he's kind of been on this line for a hot minute. I mean, the guy, what he, it's not like he's, last two seasons have kind of, like there's been a big decline in his play. Like his first three seasons with the squad were just, and last two there has been a significant dip in play from him but i mean he's solid he's solid most teams would love to have ldt and then on the other side who will be the starting guard because right here it has nick uh, allegretti and he saw all of like what i think it was like two snaps at right tackle or right guard excuse me and then the rest he was just a brought in as an extra blocker which is similar how they did or what they did with austin reader oh man i'm so sorry if i'm butchering that name i should have looked it up beforehand it's so it looks so easy too but kind of similar how they used him keep in mind he's coming into his second season now so maybe they utilize him more but Andrew Wiley was actually pretty solid last year. He was on par with Stefan Wisniewski. So, not half bad. I think that's a interesting battle to be had. Looking at some of their additions there, Mike Remmers could be maybe competition there at the right guard spot. And then some of the guys they brought in through the draft, Lucas Nain, will he be, is he the heir apparent to Mitchell Schwartz? Because Mitchell Schwartz, he's only 31. He's probably got four or five more years in him. So maybe a replacement over Eric Fisher. Only thing is, Lucas Nyan, he's only played right tackle. So interesting there. We're, we're looking at the future in this season preview. You see our Durant. They brought in as an undrafted free agent, I believe, and out of Missouri. I think he works good as an extra potential extra blocker or uh but yeah, maybe a swing tackle guy. He's actually pretty athletic for his size. Just not the type of athleticism you want to kind of see the type of agility and quick footwork you want to see to leave him out there at tackle. So, yeah, I mean, he might end up being a practice squad guy. But regardless, the offensive line actually looks fairly good. You got, granted, probably competition at the right guard and left guard spot. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like I said, Wiley, he played actually fairly well last year. And Allegretti is a guy that 
they seem pretty high on. He was a uh, forgot where he was drafted, but uh, he was part of their 2019 class. And then Mike Remmers moving him into guard might be solid. And uh, it'll be interesting. It will be interesting nonetheless. So let's just go ahead. Let's talk about the defense because this was a what a uh, Ben but Ben but don't break type of defense at least towards the end of this end of the year and into the playoffs uh spagnula had this defense playing extremely well so let's start with the defensive line because i'm not gonna lie that's kind i i have concerns all over this defense but for what this defensive line looks like i don't think they're much of anything you might be like what hear me out on this let's start with the edge spots and frank clark he to me frank clark is not an elite pass rusher and he's never really been that his whole career he's been a solid run defender who can be a good complement as a pass rusher but he's never the guy never the bride always the bridesmaid type of pass rusher <laughs> if that makes sense but i mean even last year i think he only was uh slightly above a 10 percent pass rush win rate find him real quick yeah, he was only slightly above that granted i mean he did pull 13 sacks from that but easy to do that when you got chris jones who is amazing i love i love me some chris jones but we'll we'll get to the interior line in a sack and then on the other side i'm probably gonna be alex okafor again but he is actually his pass rush win rate was below 10 percent uh so then you look at other guys uh maybe who who can maybe step up here? You got Tano um, Passino. Nailed it. <laughs> Who actually had 800, I think. 856 snaps last season. But he produced virtually no pressure. Another guy under a 10% pass rush win rate. And he wasn't even that good as a run defender. So, eh. Then you have Breland Speaks. Who actually spent all the last season rehabbing from injury. And a guy who I was... I thought could have been a not necessarily a breakout player but can be in this rotation he's a guy i don't want to say i'm pretty high on but i think he could be a good complement in this rotation but like i said hurt all last season um where he spent most of the season just rehabbing and then i think he might be facing a suspension so that's something to kind of watch but after that they don't got much mike dana um a guy that really coming out of michigan just he was actually a transfer from Michi uh, Central Michigan to Michigan. Really just a guy with a good bull rush. Not much else to him. Taco Charlton. Um, I mean, honestly, he's he's just kind of been eh, a guy who looks the part but never, never was. And then on the interior, yes, Chris Jones. Phenomenal. He's great. He's, he's Chris Jones. The dude's a beast. But who will be next to him i don't think they really have anyone that can really play on the interior that well uh honestly i like mike pennell um he only played a few uh snaps 205 snaps last year but he was pretty solid especially as a run defender not necessarily the best pass rusher from the interior but he was solid enough then you got the guy who saw the snaps Derek naughty who he I, to me he wasn't even good he wasn't even a good good um run defender let's see here where 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 do i got this because he saw 698 snaps and he ended up on he ended up having like 36 stops which is i right, but he had like 14 missed tackles so that's like wolf and then colin um saunders who they got in the second round uh the season before i believe no no it was third round excuse me third round who a guy that came into the senior bowl from a from a um non-division one school kind of blew up the senior bowl guy of his size with pretty darn good athleticism and explosiveness and it looked like he kind of had the some rookie woes but i kind i kind of saw him as a project anyway he's a guy i kind of hope could come in and maybe be the nose tackle or maybe come in and like you can move chris jones around the interior if you want so maybe a guy that can break out next season but 
he wasn't he wasn't anything special as far as last season but again a guy that i think was more of a developmental prospect so the so the defensive line i'm not at all wooed over and that kind of speaks volumes when we get into the linebacker core which is actually weak i know a lot of people want to say that uh damian wilson was pretty good last year i disagree he was terrible i think he was terrible he gave up 524 yards in coverage and he only on 57 targets he allowed 47 receptions so he wasn't bad at nothing down in coverage uh he was i'll give him this over anthony hitchens he was a much better tackler and he was much better in the run game hitchens slightly better at as a in coverage but not much so to me there's not too much of a difference between those two guys the guy i am really high on i think should start immediately willie gay jr he hasn't this is a small sample size but he's an athletic freak he's a sideline to sideline player he's graded well in coverage at mississippi state when on the field people want to throw red flags at him like like oh look he was um suspended there at mississippi state he cheated on a um chemistry test chemistry is hard especially in college calm down calm down it's not like it's a character red flag he's a cheer he was a kid that was trying <laughs> i was trying to get good grades <laughs> i guess i don't know he's a football player he's a football player he was there to play football in mississippi state not to be chemist but again a guy that i think will be phenomenal in coverage I'd like to see more of him on the field. I think he's an upgrade, immediately upgrade or immediate upgrade over Wilson or Hitchens, regardless. But again, kind of weak. Secondary though, I'm optimistic about. And we could probably let's just start at the corner position. You got her uh Charver Charverius Ward, who from he had a pretty darn good streak of play, like from I think week five, that indie game to week 13, he was pretty darn good. In between though, or like uh, the beginning of the year, not so much. And then kind of in the playoffs, I don't know, he wasn't exposed, but he wasn't nearly as good. But again, you've seen, you've seen, not elite, you've seen quality play from him. So I'm totally cool. I'm totally cool with him. Really, um, Brashad Breland, he's kind of a boomer bust, kind of a journeyman at this point of his career. So, yeah, that's why I think they signed just a one year deal again. So, and then also, you have a very, I, I like Rashad Fenton. I like what at least I saw from Rashad Fenton last season. Um, so I'm kind of excited. I want to see him get maybe more than 244 snaps. Uh, interesting. Like, I like what they did as far as well, the youth they brought in. Legereus Sneed is a guy that's former safety at, at uh, Louisiana Tech. He's going to be moving to corner. He has, like, athletic-wise, he has the elite traits from size to, like I said, his athleticism to be a solid press man corner. Just might need a minute to develop. So, may not want to throw him into the to the Lions then just yet. I love the pickup undrafted free agent Lavert Hill out of Michigan. The guy, he's a pretty darn good press man corner. He's very aggressive. Size has always been a thing with him though. So a guy that I I'm kind of interested to see the play in the mix here. Javarius Davis out of Auburn. A guy that, again, size, but could be maybe a slot guy. Uh, then they got the cat out of Tulane who he was a late round pick. <laughs> so i think there's optimism at the corner position but the bread and butter will be the safeties because they like to play three safety sets more uh, most of the time and with juan thornhill being just a banger of a pick um, Tyre, um the honey badger he could kind of move around as he likes and i think they're going to try to incorporate not daniel Sorensen, but armani watts into this defense i know i know this guy he hasn't really yeah he hasn't at all met expectations uh, i think he only played like a handful of snaps last season how many was it uh 81 for the most most part he was on special teams but it they were pretty high on this guy 
I think this is kind of the make or break year. This is like, hey, you got to go prove it. Like they like running. It's either going to be him or Sorensen. So I'm going to bank on Arm Armani Watts. I like his athleticism. I like he's pretty rangy. So I think they're going to probably play um, they maybe kind of like around the line of scrimmage, maybe in the slot if they want to, rather than bring it in or put in another corner on the field. At least that's from their snaps last season. That's what they more so opted to do. Keep in mind. You can say, well, Kendall Fuller, no, they literally moved him to safety. He was literally like there. He was playing single high because he was struggling at the corner position. He was struggling in the slot. So they moved him to single high and they were keeping Thornhill and the Honey Badger on the field. So we'll see. We'll see. Let's just go ahead. Take a gander at ooh, the schedule. So, of course, you got Denver, the Chargers, and the Raiders twice a year. Chargers, I think they're still a pretty competent team. Denver, they're, they're rising. I don't know. They're not there yet, though. They're not there yet. Don't just give, don't just don't just say they will compete this year for the AFC West crown. I don't think that's the case just yet. Calm down. And then you got, of course, Las Vegas Raiders. I, and I ain't trying to be disrespectful, but let's be honest. And their other, uh, their face is going to be facing the AFC East, which, and how fun Dolphins. <laughs> have fun Dolphins. And of course, you got the Tom Brady list Patriots, um, Sam Darnold and company. Not like I dislike the Jets, it's just Adam Gase. You know what I mean? And, of course, the Bills, who improved a ton this year, and that'll be a good measuring stick. They actually have to go to Buffalo, so that'll be interesting. And then they have to travel to the NFC South, which is much more difficult. Got teams like the Saints, which they, they're literally going to be trying to make a Super Bowl run. They have built this team to try to win this year or next. And then you got Atlanta, who always, they have great talent there. It's just a matter of getting it all together. They played much better down the stretch of the season, final stretch of the season. So that that could be that could be a competitive team. And, of course, Tom Brady, but with the Buccaneers, the new look Bucks. Well, I guess the new destination Brady. So that'll be very interesting. And then the Carolina Panthers, they're, kind of, they're in a rebuild, so. That fill it out. And then, of course, Baltimore Ravens, Houston Texans, by no means are those easy games. But for the most part, I think it's a very balanced schedule. But before we get into my projected starters, I've been given the opportunity to do some cool stuff with some awesome content, football content creators. We're going to be um, banding together and get, just providing some awesome content for you guys. Just straight up football nothing else <laughs> uh no entertainment no politics no uh uh i guess weather i don't know it's just football no other sports <laughs> but you're gonna see a lot of different perspectives and on news and analysis and a big part of that will be going with twitch twitch so go ahead and follow twitch ftfn twitch.tv ftfn FN. I'm gonna push it to the quick trailer and then we'll get into those starters. Offensive starters. Patrick Mahomes, of course. I'm gonna go with Clyde Edwards Hilaire just for the fact that he was a first round pick. I you spent a first round pick on a running back. I expect you to use them. And then Tyree Kill, Sammy Watt, Watkins, of course, and then McKeel, Nicole Harmon. Ooh, don't know why I'm having a tough time with that. Travis Kelsey, of course, is your tight end. And then Eric Fisher. I went with Andrew Wiley here just because he he played actually pretty well last year. Austin Reader? <laughs> As I mumble his name, Austin Reader? And then I put LDT because I don't think Mike Remmers will be good enough to actually take the right guard spot. And then Mitchell Schwartz on defense. I got Chris Jones. I got Derek 
not he just because he played so many snaps last year and i don't know i maybe maybe saunders kind of plays a role in this rotation but i mean mike pinnell he, he definitely deserves time he played extra pretty well for the limited snap total he had so that'll be interesting Brent Clark Alex Okafor Anthony Hitchens I went with over Damian Williams or Damian uh, Wilson and then Willie Gay Jr. and then in the secondary Rashad Bree Lind and then I got Ward as well as your slot or more so kind of like guy you want to you can move around wherever I got the honey badger himself Juan Thornhill and then Armani Watts like I said I think this is probably a make or break season for him so we might see more of him actually playing on the defense than we did the year before or insert Daniel Sorensen as far as a prediction here we go like I said this is a very good team and I actually have them with the highest record in the NFL at 13 and 3 it's just hard to bet against this team with a healthy Patrick Mahomes um, that offense is just downright scary all the time. The defense, while it's not great, um, if they're playing anything like they did last year, I mean, like at the end of the year with in, in the playoffs, like a defense, that defense shut down Houston after Houston, Houston put up a big lead. They shut down the 49ers after the 49ers got ahead early i mean honestly they were that defense was probably only good for about quarter and a half so i don't know it'll, it'll be interesting regardless i think this team is very good they should make another run at the super bowl but let me know what you think in the comment section below and that's it for the video go ahead do the youtube themes much appreciated much obliged tomorrow playoff predictions will be out but until next time you be easy my friends later